Hello all sentient beings and welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode where we talk about all news, comics, and media related to the... On this episode of Transmissions Alt Mode, we're joined by a man who prefers button-up jeans, Dr. Pants, as we review Transformers Beast Wars Issue 5. Props used in the 2007 live-action Transformers movie go on sale, and Hasbro went all pimp my ride on a Transformers-themed race car. Today is Friday, July 9th, 2021, and this is episode 241 of Transmissions Alt Mode. Welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode, the podcast that Russian Yoshi keeps trying to get syndicated on Russia today, but we won't let him. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team, Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how's it going? Scott, the illustrious Dr. Pants. Hello, everyone. And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey, how's it going? Let's talk Transformers. All right. Uh, again, we start off the show by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who give us money on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you to everyone who supports the show. We really appreciate it. And if you are not already a supporter and would like to become one, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. That'll help us out. Uh, we also have the next episode of Empire of Rust. Uh, this is coming next Monday, uh, but this is the uncut donatron special version this is a perk of being a donatron you get the episode a week early this is episode 54 the bot that got away and this will be out monday july 12th on our patreon page or the uh, donatron dropbox so if you are a donatron you will get special access a week early Uh, if not you'll have to wait another week on uh, july 19th when the regular episode goes up in the main pod in the uh, free empire of rust feed so look forward to that charles. all right L- yes Ch- charles I, who, who is hold that on, I, i'm coming who is this <sighs> i i hear you talking about russia today <laughs> yay I, <laughs> what what do you want to know i'm trying i'm trying very very hard to get you on russian today uh that that's all right yoshi we <laughs> We don't. We don't want to contribute to Russian propaganda. What? What are you talking about? Russian propaganda? Not. Not propaganda. <laughs> we got. We got this William Shatner. He is on the <laughs> Russia Today now. Captain Kirk. He is on Russia Today. It was on the show Star Trek. You never heard of this? Russia Today we- is on. The, he has on the show Russia Today. It's very good. You get on the show. And we will have everybody talking about transmissions, and then all of the Donatrions come in like water. So uh, much money, like <laughs> like water. Uh, we we try we pride ourselves in being a, a, an independent uh, podcast network. So you know that that might that might compromise our independence. No, you don't have to worry. The Russia today they leave you alone. Let you do what you want. They don't interfere with nothing. <laughs> We'll think about it, Russian Yoshi. Uh, go. We'll uh, okay, let us finish okay. the show, and we'll we'll, you, we'll talk about think, it later. You think you think about it. All you need, you let me know. Give me call. You dial dial number. You know my number, but <laughs> you you don't don't give out. Too many people <laughs> want to find me, but you know my number. Don't give out. You call. We talk about Russia today. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. C- could you find Daryl? Uh, we need Daryl back. All right, I get my guys to, to bring him back news. in. Hold on. <laughs> Unless you like Beast Wars. B- <laughs> Beast Wars, never heard of her. <laughs> guys, bring back the big one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. What was that all about? What? Did you did you get kidnapped by, <laughs> by... I get dragged out of here. KGB they, agents? <laughs> they drag me out. And then I just get yanked back in. It's very unpleasant. Well, what's not unpleasant is Transformers Comics news. So let's start off and talk about that. All right. First up in comics news, we've got the IDW Collection Volume 2 Phase 3. So this is looks like it's scheduled for a release. There's a listing on Amazon. It's scheduled for release on March 29th, 2022. So that's... 
uh, about nine months away. We got a little bit of time. Uh, This collection features uh, Till All Are One, issues 9 through 12, uh, the Optimus Prime series, issues 1 through 6, and Transformers Lost Light, issues 1 through 7. So this is uh, starting off Phase 3, continuing Phase 3. So this is after uh, post-revolution issues and, you know, when when we had the the Hasbro universe of uh, that featuring transformers and all the titles relaunched. So uh, this has a cover uh, featuring star scream. So it's a, um, you know, I, I'm not sure who the artist is for this cover, uh, but it's a nice star scream. It might be Sarah Peter Duoche. I think she did the last one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks like her stuff. Probably. What do we, what do we do if IDW is not a company in nine months? <laughs> <laughs> Cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> it's an Amazon pre-order, so you don't have to worry about the you know paying for it and not yeah. getting your money back. But uh, they're getting their they're 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 sending their feelers out really far now. <laughs> you just take all your comics to one of those companies that'll bind them together. <laughs> That's a good idea. I mean, even you know, IDW will probably. I mean, even if they're not an independent company, they'll be. In some shape or form, something they'll be acquired. They won't be dissolved. They'll be acquired by someone else. So probably the license will go somewhere. Yeah, their their stuff mm-hmm. will continue to be printed. So anyway, uh, we've got another uh, piece of comics news. I'm going to hand this over to Jeremy. Yeah, this is more industry wide comics news. Um, every year, Comicron does this um, kind of year in review post that shows like you know how good or bad the industry is doing. And I thought this was interesting because of everything that happened last year with the pandemic and, you know, DC leaving diamond and stuff like that. And surprisingly uh, in the U S and Canada, total sales had a 6% increase over 2019. Uh, It was approximately 1.28 billion. Uh, It said that the market was actually ahead of the previous year before the pandemic struck. So like around March, Hmm. um, and then because of the pandemic, 30% fewer books were published. So new comic sales were down by only 20%, but because they were ahead pre-pandemic, that gave them the 6% increase. So I think that's a good sign for you know going into this year. Now retailers have figured out how to adjust. Um, fewer comics are being published, so that also helps. But I think probably more stores have other avenues now with like online or curbside stuff like that where they're able to maybe even get a bigger audience because, you know, people have better ways of getting their books. Mm -hmm. So I just, I thought that was really encouraging. You know, we were singing the doom and gloom of the industry throughout last year. And it turns out that it did much better than anyone would have expected. So, you know, I thought we would just, you know, have this good news now to kind of cap off, you know, a crappy 2020. I find it interesting looking at these graphs that graphic novels still sell like almost, well, probably around three times as much as just regular comic books. Right. That, but I mean, that's, that's, you know, your Barnes and Nobles and even yeah. like Walmart and Target and, you know, yeah, they all sell graphic novels. That's true. And I get that. It's just, I mean, as a, as a comic book guy for, you know, myself and has been for a lot of time i've had never have any had, had any interest in in buying a graphic novel it's always been you know the 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 individual issues and you know that's it i'm wondering if graphic novels also includes like manga where mm. probably yeah. maybe and, yeah and honestly then that wouldn't surprise me just because like the only way to get those kinds of stories here in the states is to buy those full volumes and everything Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and Quattro says in the chat that normally, like in normal school years, scholastic book fairs also probably contribute a good amount. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. And also, uh, graphic novels—they're you know—they're more expensive per book, so you're paying more per book. So you're probably selling fewer physical books for graphic novels, but each book is going to be more expensive. So you're going to—the revenue True. is going to be higher. And mm-hmm. you're capturing all those people who are not reading monthly comics who want to pick up, you know, the entire collected story. If, you know, for for just for comics in general, 
there are there's a lot of, there's a big market for people who don't want to hunt down back issues anymore. They just want to get the graphic novel and get the whole story. Yeah. If you're not if you're not yeah. a, if you're not a issue collector, you know, or you uh, or looking for specific issues, you just want to get the read the story. You just get the graphic novel. Yeah. One thing I thought was interesting here was um, they have digital numbers, which I'm not sure how accurate they are, but um, it does say that the digital numbers don't include the like all you can eat, like the Marvel Unlimited, DC, um, whatever they're calling it now. Um, so just individual sales was 160 million versus physical single issue sales was 440. And we've always heard that digital sales aren't like a huge percentage of of, indus- of the industry, but I would say, you know, this is about a third of physical sales, and that's pretty strong in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, also digital, uh, again, with digital comics, you're getting, you get some deep discounts. Like Comixology is always running like those 50% discounts for different books or different, you know, different stories yeah. or different, uh, you know, different uh, publishers, whatever. Yeah, and I wonder also with 2020 being what it was, um, this did say digital sales were turbocharged because of, um, you know, the comic stores being closed. Mm-hmm. Sure. So that does make sense. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It's a lot of interesting information. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not specifically Transformers news, but I, I really like to follow the trends and, you know, happy to see that the industry is on an upswing. Mm-hmm. You're definitely our trendiest host. Thank you. <laughs> I'll try. All right. Well, that's all our comics news. So we will move on to our comic review. This week, we are reviewing Transformers Beast Wars, issue number five, Savage Landing, part five. Written by Eric Burnham, art and colors by Josh Burcham, letters by Jake M. Wood, assistant editor Riley Farmer, editor David Marriott, and supervising editor Tom Waltz. So we have three covers uh, for this issue. Cover A is Dinobot Behind Bars, and that's by Josh Burcham. Cover B is a pretty uh, a cartoon accurate Pterosaur and Cheetor by Dan Schoening with colors by Luis Antonio Delgado. And then uh, the retail incentive cover is Rat Trap being stalked by Tarantulas, and this is by Alex Milne with colors by Sid Ven Blue, uh, who I am not familiar with. So... Daryl, I'm going to start with you. Which cover would you pick here? Uh, well, it is Beast Wars, uh, which, uh, you know, gets me, you know, to put my defenses up a bit. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Alex's cover here. It is the one that I did buy. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's it's Alex and he does a pretty good job at uh, rendering, uh, you know, characters, whether they be beasts or normal characters. Um and uh, you know it's a it's a good uh, you know horror story looking cover, and that's the one I'm I'm gonna go with. All right, uh, Doctor Pants, which cover do you like? I really like the RI cover. I actually, when I first saw this, I didn't realize it was Alex. Um, it looked a lot different than I'm used to seeing it, so it's a pleasant surprise to hear that it's him. It is a really really great cover. I love the way Rat Trap looks. Um, very, very faithful to the original cartoon with the way his face is done, with the mouth and eyes glowing red like that. And he's carrying his gun like the original show had. It's like the same design gun. Plus, I love Tarantulas. He's one of my favorite Beast Wars characters, and I love him being creepy, stalking in the shadows and everything. So um, it's just a great-looking cover. Great. And Jeremy, which cover are you picking? Well, I really like the cover A, but I've got to give it to um, Alex's cover. It's just really creepy and fantastic and i mean i love that both cover a and the ri actually reference something in this in the story but just that creepiness i mean in that image is just so good and i think i will make it unanimous and also pick the retailer incentive cover uh for all the reasons that everyone said already rat trap and tarantulas look great in this cover here uh, very well detailed and it's a just a really cool and creepy uh scary image really nice okay so let's get into the story after rescuing the maximal nix from his former predacon allies dinobot has not quite earned the trust of the other maximals optimus primal has put him in a holding cell while they decide what to do with him dinobot tells optimus that he simply decided to switch sides and fight with the maximals Optimus Primal is understandably skeptical. 
Nyx, now fully repaired after her ordeal with the Predacons, asks Optimus if she can have a moment alone with their Predacon prisoner. Optimus hesitates, but agrees and leaves them alone. Nyx turns to Dinobot and asks him point blank, why did he help her? Dinobot answers that she didn't deserve to die helpless and being tortured. Nyx is unconvinced. Despite the uneasy peace between Maximals and Predacons, there's ancient animosity between the two tribes. Dinobot is a terrorist who attacked the Maximal Science Ministry, her ship, and tortured her. So why would he care about a random Maximal? Dinobot angrily responds that he did not torture her. He then answers her question with a question. What does she really know about the Predacons? She answers that they're all violent and aggressive. That amuses Dinobot, but he agrees that the Predacons were bred to be warriors. And even in peacetime, the Predacon instinct is to seek out and thrive in conflict, sports, science, and law enforcement. Dinobot tells Nix he believes in honor, and he thought Megatron did too, which is how Megatron recruited him. The Maximal Science Ministry was covering up the importance of the golden disc to Cybertron's history, and that was an injustice Dinobot wouldn't stand for. But when he saw how Megatron's other Predacon recruits behaved and how violent and cruel they were, Dinobot did not like how far Megatron was willing to go. Nix's enhanced interrogation by Tarantulas was the last straw for him. Nix gets her answers, but so does Rat Trap, since he's monitoring their conversation via surveillance cameras from the bridge of the Axelon. Cheetor isn't happy with Rat Trap spying on Nix, but Rat Trap quickly changes the subject. It turns out Rat Trap's tinkering with the Axelon sensors to search for Nix gave them a good early warning system. They see the Predacons approaching the ship, and they've probably got hostile intent. Rat Trap alerts Optimus Primal, who orders Rat Trap to raise the ship's defenses but they're still offline after the crash. They spent all their efforts upgrading the sensors to search for Nyx and haven't had time to fix anything else. So the Maximals, outnumbered and outgunned, are in a bit of a pickle. Optimus Primal tells Rattrap to fix the ship's defenses while the other Maximals buy him some time. Megatron is ready to savor his victory and orders the Predacons to advance in a frontal assault. As they emerge from the tree line, he sees the Maximals are coming to meet him directly. He surmises that their ship's defenses must be down, so he orders Tarantulas to sneak aboard and destroy their ship from within, while the other Predacons face the Maximals head on. Before they attack, Megatron, as the future ruler of Cybertron, gives the Maximals one opportunity to surrender or be destroyed. Naturally, Optimus Primal does not accept that offer and counters with an arrest warrant, which Megatron ignores. And the battle is joined. Optimus Prime, Cheater, and Rhinox hold their own against Megatron, Pterosaur, Scorponok, Waspinator, and Scold. Cheetor is fast, but even he has trouble dodging all the attacks of Scorponok, Waspinator, and Pterosaur combined. Rhinox has his hands full with Scold since she matches him in strength, and Megatron and Optimus Primal trade blows. Inside the ship, Nix's enhanced hearing picks up the activity outside. The computer tells her it's a Predacon attack, and she immediately wants to help. Dinobot pleads with her to let him out so he can help, but Nix hesitates. Elsewhere, Rat Trap continues repairs on the ship. Then the lights go out. In the darkness, he hears something approach him from behind. He turns and reacts just in time as Tarantulas in his giant spider mode drops from the ceiling and pounces. Rat Trap manages to fight him off with his welding torch and hides in the darkness. Tarantulas taunts the Maximal as he promises to eat him alive when he catches him. Outside, the battle continues, but the Maximals are slowly losing. Megatron gloats that he has the upper hand and the Predacons will soon overwhelm overwhelm them. But just as Megatron is ready to deliver another blow to the prone Optimus Primal, laser blasts come from above. Nyx and Dinobot have arrived to even the odds. To be continued. So I thought this was a a good issue. This was a good mix of action and storytelling. Um, I, it did feel like it's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a half issue because we, right when we get to the, the big battle, the issue ends. So uh, I, you know, that, that felt a little, you know, I mean, I, it's comics. So of course there's always another issue, but it just felt like the issue ended right, right in the middle of the action. So that just left me a little, a little disappointed, but of course I'm going to get the next issue. So I guess mission accomplished there, but I, I did enjoy this issue. I thought Josh Burton's art was great as always. Uh, I, I really like how he draws all the characters. They're, they're very angular in robot mode and then more like fluid in uh, beast mode. So that's, it's a really nice contrast there. Uh, and, uh, you know, I liked, uh, I like, uh, you know, how the story turned out. I mean, I, I think my, this is, I still have a little bit of a complaint that we talked about last issue when we were talking about beast wars, how this is, this feels pretty drawn out for the, this first story arc. This is essentially 
just the first two episodes of the cartoon and it's been spread across now i guess it'll be six issues so that that feels a little just a little slow <laughs> but i do like the kind of altering from the the way the cartoon turned out and and they do actually reference it in in the comic how Dinobot says, would you rather I fight you to the death to join the Maximals? And, and of course, that is how it happened in the cartoon. But here, this is it's a little bit different. So I appreciated that little reference. So, uh, Daryl, I know you are a notorious. Uh, actually, I believe you are the the best Beast Wars fan on transmissions, right? The the top Beast Wars fan. I, th- I think you, <laughs> the biggest, you claim yes, that title. The biggest. The biggest. The biggest. Yep. OK, so uh, so what were your thoughts on this issue? Um, I, uh, well, at the start, I wasn't too fond of how much, um, the, how much talking was going on between Primal and Dinobot and then Nix and Dinobot. Um, I mean, I get what was going on. It's like you were saying, this is, this is no real secret what's going on unless Eric Burnham, the writer is going to throw a real monkey wrench into everything and Dinobot is you know, double spying, you know, everything. And he's going to actually flip back and everything's going to be turned on its head. Um, but I highly doubt that. Um, the, the action sequence that started up, I, I enjoyed it was, it was pretty well choreographed, I guess. Um, there was a lot of, you know, posturing by, between both uh, leaders, which I can see being in a cartoon, which would have been, um, uh, would have been fun to see in, you know, in a, if it were portrayed in a cartoon. Um, the, uh, the one part of it did kind of get, get me though. And you're going to have to explain this to me because I didn't watch the cartoon, but, uh, from what I understand when they convert Jeremy, uh, when they convert from <laughs> robot to beast mode, what do they say? Uh, maximize or terrorize. Okay, so the Predacons say terrorize, right. So when yes. Megatron is yelling to attack, he yells terrorize here, mm-hmm. which I would assume just means transform. Uh, so, you know, so he mm-hmm. needs, there's two meanings for the same word in this in this universe, uh, which um, I, I guess you need to know, you know, if he's ordering you to transform, then he's yelling ter- terrorize. Or if he's ordering you to attack, he's yelling terrorize. Um, you know, I saw that as a bit a yeah, bit confusing. It would make sense if everyone was in their animal mode and then he yelled it. But you had two in the robot mode in that scene. But if it just meant transform, it doesn't actually matter. Changed form. I d- yeah, I don't think anyone actually changed form. And I don't think they've actually used it in the comic to transform con- consistently like they did in the cartoon. Right. I guess I'm and just it's confusing kinda, two things. I mean, it, it's kind of just it, it, they in the cartoon they start off using it all the time, but like later on in the cartoon, it becomes less and less. Like the 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 cartoon kind of implies that it's it's more they they call it an activation code. So it's not like they have to say it to transform; they just say it as emphasis. It's like it's I, I guess it's like anime, where in anime characters sometimes like call out the attack they're going to do you know, super robot punch. And then they punch, you know, it's not, it's not meant to be that they have to say it in order to do it. It's just meant for emphasis, emphasis, I guess. Okay. Um, but I did like the, uh, I did like the battle, uh, just, you know, Cheetor jumping around and, um, but uh, the, and the, uh, the sneaking around, I think, uh, you know, we've talked about it a little bit with regards to the cover. Um, that was done very well, um, between, uh, tarantulas and, uh, rat traps so yeah there were some good bits in here um the battle was good and and i agree with you uh you don't stop the book in the middle of the fight that's just that's just stupid so um (laughs) yeah it was uh the book was decent all right uh dr pants what did you think i loved it i love beast wars so much and i've been loving this comic also so much I have to ask, what's the criteria for being the biggest Beast Wars fan on transmissions? <laughs> that Daryl has really, that title. He got a really rare toy he showed off that he paid a lot of money for. So he, he paid oh, for that title. Okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, he paid he uh, paid to win. <laughs> I bought the most expensive Beast Wars toy. 
Oh, 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 the 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 taco tank or whatever it was. Or yep. the, yeah, yeah. Taco the, Tuesdays. The yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. I respect that. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> We're still gonna make him watch some of the shows. <laughs> you know what? If he's gonna be the biggest Beast Wars fan, he better watch Beast Wars, Beast Machines, Beast Wars Second, and Beast Wars Neo. <laughs> well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> Only Charles and I have seen the last. Yeah, episode. that's true. I've, I've got them I've, all, but <laughs> you know we'll we'll have Beast Wars, Beast Machines, we'll have Kingdom by then, and so we we got to be ready for the the live action movie next year. Uh, we're gonna talk about that later, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The comic. Um, no, I loved it. And one of my favorite things that they did with this is I kind of like how they they are paying homage to the first couple of episodes and how Dinobot immediately switches sides. But I like the new spin on it because I remember being a kid and watching those first two episodes and thinking, oh, Dinobot is their star screen because he he starts off by looking at Megatron being like, I'm taking over the Predacons, kind of like what Starscream would do. And Megatron's like, nope. And then Dinobot shows up and he's like, I'm going to take over the Maximals. And then they fight to the death. But like as that TV series went on, you know, we learned that Dinobot's an honorable warrior. And I think they do a better job establishing that character through this arc and doing this. And um, his discussion with Optimus Primal and Nyx is really, really good and makes me like the character from the beginning more than the show did. Um, Particularly two lines I love is the I did not torture you like he has to emphasize that. And then... There's another one where Nyx mentions that when she was in university, a Predacon nearly killed her during a lab project. And he just goes, yes, school is a difficult time. And I just, (laughs) I love that line. It's it's very, very funny. Uh, The rest of the book I really enjoyed. I like the Predacon showing up and attacking. I like the fight scene. Um, I like Cheetor just being so fast that even uh, Scorponok and Waspinator by themselves can't take him because he's so quick. Uh, Rhinox going toe-to-toe with Scald and like just... Trading blows is really good. The whole thing with Tarantulas in the ship going after Rat Trap. Oh, so creepy, but so good. I can't wait to see where that goes in the next issue. And then Megatron and Optimus Primal just beating the crap out of each other. That's that's what we're here for. And, of course, you can't help but love Dinobot and Nyx, like, showing up at the end to be like, no, we're going to we're gonna finish this fight together. The shot of Nyx with her wings out, like, hovering up above, that's a really cool shot of her. And I really hope in the future we get some kind of figure of Nyx and Skull. I really, really like their characters, and I just like them in this. But the artwork's really good. The action is drawn really well. I love how expressive all the characters are, and I just love the style. I think the style fits it really well. It's something different, and I'm really loving this book. It takes me back to being a kid, and I can't wait to read more. All right. Maybe you're the biggest Beast Wars fan on transmissions. <laughs> I, I I don't got a taco tank. Is that what it's actually called? I feel like that's wrong. <laughs> I think it's Teco Teco Tank. Te- Teco Tank. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. And, and, and it's just an accessory to uh, Ica, Icard. Yeah, the, the, the claw jaw repaint, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was what the Ninja Turtles were always trying to get to. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeremy, what are your thoughts on this book? I really enjoyed it, too. I mean, I... I think part of my issue reading books now is if, if it's really worried, I start going to, oh, Daryl's going to hate this before, you know, and it kind of takes me out of any book that's really wordy when I I enjoy the character moments. Um, and I really, I really like the nuance that they're giving Dinobot here. Like Dr. Pants was saying how it's, it's setting up the character, I think, much better here than the show did. And I think it's giving Dinobot such a better foundation and having rat trap monitor and kind of eavesdrop on that conversation, I think is going to pay off later um, in helping convince Optimus as if the fight is not going to help convince Optimus. Um, The tarantulas bit is every bit as creepy as I was hoping tarantulas would be. And I don't know. I just, the, the fight was, was good. I mean, the posturing at the beginning, I think was, Maybe a little bit long, but it's the characters. I mean, Megatron, if he doesn't have a, you know, stupid long speech, it's not the same character. So I, I'm really enjoying this. I think the art was great. And I've noticed in some scenes, particularly that last panel, it looks like Nyx is a little bit blurry in places. And I don't know if, if that's like to 
help convey movement or just the distance or whatever. But I, I see in some of this like intentional blurriness and it took me a second. I like had to see if it was just my eyes, but you know, it's actually how it is in the book. And I really like that. Um, you know, it's something I don't really see a lot of. And then well, one last thing was the, the Cheetor bit as an avid reader of the flash books, that just seems like something that would be like something that flash would do. <laughs> you know, just kind <laughs> of, he knows that he's so much faster and he's just like, he, he is just, he's like, you miss me, you miss me again. <laughs> and you know, I, I really, I really enjoyed that piece. So yeah, th- this was a really fun book. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the, the last couple of pages. They, uh, Josh uses that motion blur effect in some of the fight scenes with Optimus Primal and Megatron. Like you can see when, uh, when Optimus is sweeping the leg, uh, of Megatron, mm-hmm. he's a little blurry to convey motion. And when, uh, you know, when Megatron is slamming his, his, uh, T Rex arm down, T Rex head arm down on Primal. Uh, yeah, you see that motion effect, and on the last page, you see that the motion effect too. So yeah, it's a, it's it's a cool little subtle uh, detail that that Josh adds into the the artwork. It's really interesting, and really really well done. All right, well that is our review of Transformers Beast Wars issue five, and so we will move on to Transformers Media News. All right, in media news this week. Got a few things to talk about. Uh, the first one is that uh, did you know that uh, there is a collaborative project between Transformers and Dawson Racing Team, uh, and that is a real life racing car, uh, and they have a Transformers branding on it. Uh, this is a uh, the number eighty three D three plus, which is the Le Mans uh, P three race car, and it is a. Uh, uh, doesn't even the story doesn't even say what kind of car it is. Um, it is driven by Theodore Olson and Dominic Cesario, um, and uh, it uh, has uh, has raced uh, raced t- t- a few days ago. Um, but uh, I don't know how they did. But yeah, anyway, it's very cool. Uh, it's red and black, and a lot of people are. Um, saying, well, why isn't it blue and white and in mirage colors or something like that? And I'm like, this doesn't just let it be it. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't need to reference everything. Um, but it's very cool. It's a red, it's a Transformers car. It's uh, as a real life race car with an Autobot logo on it and Transformers branding all over it. And, uh, very cool. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's very neat. Uh, I don't often see, uh, um, you never see cars out there in the real world with Autobot logos on them, you know? <laughs> yeah, that never happens. It, it's, it's awesome that it, it's awesome that it's number eighty four. Yeah, <laughs> and see, we're gonna get a toy of this. Hasbro, you you got the logo on the real life car, so so put that Autobot logo on your uh, collaborative figures that you sell as toys. <laughs> My goodness, he's still on this. It's not even the same show. <laughs> <laughs> he's been going on about this for days. Days. It's nonstop. Um, we, uh, moving on, we do have another clip of War for Cybertron Kingdom. Uh, so this has got some spoilers in it. So maybe, uh, maybe don't watch it if you don't want to be spoiled. But uh, it's only about uh, four seconds long. So uh, it's part of a uh, What's Hot in July on Netflix uh, kind of a clip. So maybe maybe don't watch it uh but uh, it does feature some characters that are in uh war for cybertron kingdom uh so take a look if you don't care but uh be warned that there are some spoilers in there um we've got a uh a, a look at matt ferguson and his 1986 transformers uh art collection this is the uh the artist who did the print for the 35th anniversary uh, I guess it's Blu-ray, uh, or no, 4K. It's 4K release. Uh, well, it's Blu-ray. It's 4K. Yeah. So he has uh, put out a shop, or a, uh, and he's got uh, he's got this some artwork on a whole bunch of different things: hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, shoes, and uh, and even just posters. So uh, very cool. It's a it's a nice print too. So I mean that's uh, that's cool. Um, the uh, there's a prop store auction. Uh, so this is props from the original 2007 
uh, Transformers movie, and all the way up, or and Dark of the Moon. So it's not uh, Revenge of the Fallen, it's just the 07 and Dark of the Moon. So if you wanted to get a chance to bid on some um, real-life movie props from the uh, the Transformers movies, there looks to be two of them up for grabs. Uh, the first one being uh, Frenzy's kind of ninja stars that he throws in uh, in the first movie, and uh, then a, a a metal case that says Top Secret on it, uh, and uh, that was in Dark of the Moon. So there's two things, and uh, you can take a look at those there if you're into movie things. Um, and the last bit of movie news that we've got is... Uh, they have cast a uh, an actor to voice Optimus Primal in Transformers: Rise of the Beasts, and it's the original, uh, you know, car- actor that uh, voiced Optimus Primal in uh, the 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 cartoon, um, but uh, not the cartoon that you are thinking of. It's uh, Ron Perlman who uh, who voiced Optimus Primal in Power of the Primes. So um, Ron Perlman's got some he's got some clout. He's got a name. Um, and, uh, he will be the voice of Optimus Primal in Transformers Rise of the Beast. Uh, I'm assuming there's going to be some discussion on this. Um, let's go to Jeremy. What, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Because, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm assuming you're, uh, you're, you're, you got an opinion. Mm, mm, yeah. No, I have no problems with Ron Perlman. Um, I think with actual decent voice directing, which I assume that this is going to have versus whatever power of the primes did. Um, I think he's going to do just fine. He's a good voice actor. He's done other roles. Um, I, I mean, I hate that we don't have um, the original actors, but I am sure that they will give Gary chalk some kind of role in the movie. And, you know, it's just, it's the way Hollywood is. Peter Cullen has been the face of the franchise since it began, or I guess the voice of the franchise. So it makes sense that they are going to keep going to Peter Cullen as long as Peter Cullen is willing to play Optimus Prime. But these other characters, they just don't have the, I don't know, the, I guess the, the clout with, you know, Hollywood types and casual fans. So as much as the fandom wants, um, you know, the original actors, Hollywood sees us as Ron Perlman is a bigger name than Optimus Primal. So we're going to put this name in the movie. And I think that's just, that's just how, you know, how it is. And we just have to deal with it. But, you know, like I said, he's a good voice actor. So it's not like they just got some random person to voice Optimus Primal. And, you know, he, they, it's a, a real actor with real, um, you know, he's got solid roles in his past. He's going to do a great job. Cool. Um, Dr. Pants, I, uh, I have a feeling that uh, you you are waiting uh, to to talk about this. Uh, anxiously waiting. Um, Ron Perlman is a is a good actor. I enjoy him. Uh, he's done some great voice work, and he was the voice of Optimus Primal in Power of the Primes, which is a much more recent incarnation of Optimus Primal than Beast Wars was. So he might be recognized by more fans because so many fans watch Power of the Primes, right? Mm-hmm. You guys did. You guys reviewed it under duress. <laughs> um, I I don't know. The more I hear about this movie, the more nervous I get about how it's going to be done and what it's going to be like. And I'm worried that it's going to turn into what the franchise was before Bumblebee. But because I mean, Ron Perlman's a big name, and I want to say that's what they're banking on rather than getting somebody who would do the character justice. But maybe he will do a good job. I don't. I don't know. I'm worried. I'm real worried. Hmm. Well, like you, like we've uh, kind of speculated, there's going to be a lot more characters to be in this movie, a lot more voices. Um, we know it's not directed by Michael Bay, uh, but uh, we do know that uh, Lorenzo de Benaventura is still part of it, which uh, is unfortunate, but that's, uh, you know, you can't do much about that. Mm. No. Um, but, we're going to see another director's vision here, and uh, I've already forgotten who that director is. Stephen Capel Jr. Right. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. Charles, why don't you let us know what your thoughts are on uh, the casting of Ron Perlman? Yeah, I mean, like Jeremy said, I would always prefer to have the original voice actors reprise their roles, because I think 
that you know they i mean particularly for beast wars i think those those actors really embodied those beast wars characters because beast wars doesn't have a lot of all you know and and auxiliary media it's really just the show from the 90s i mean beast wars and beast machines and all the voice actors carried over from beast wars to beast machines so you really that's really the iconic versions of those characters and i think there's a much bigger argument to keep those voice actors even though they're not necessarily huge names like Ron Perlman. But I mean, Ron Perlman is, a, he's a professional actor and voice actor. So I'm sure he'll do a good job, but I would still prefer Gary Chalk and Gary Chalk is still out there. He's, you know, he was in Sonic, the Sonic, the Hedgehog movie last year. So, I mean, he's a well-known actor. He's a character actor. He's not like a, you know, super famous guy, but he is a regular character actor, does regular work in lots of things. And has a distinctive, awesome voice. So, you know, come on. He's a good guy. Um, I would say that, you know, the only character that I think really you should not recast this role, like, under no circumstances. The other roles, uh, you know, I would probably be willing to trade just for this role. I really think David K as as Megatron. If they're if they're going to have Beast Wars Megatron in this movie, which I, I, at this point that's unclear, I, I'd say maybe it, it's doubtful just because that would may, might be too confusing to have another Megatron. Uh, but if they did have Beast Wars Megatron as a T Rex in this movie, you got to have David K as that voice. I really don't think anyone else could do that justice. Um, but uh, you know, at this point, I don't. I, at least I, I we haven't heard anything, but I, I don't know if they're even going to have Beast Wars Megatron in this movie. But um, in general, uh, you know, my my bar for the live action movies is pretty low at this point. So if they can clear that bar, I'll be happy. I mean, the the just the little the little bit of information we have now, it seems like they are putting a ton more Transformers characters in this movie. So hopefully with that many Transformers characters, we'll get some characterization and more, you know, some more emphasis and screen time and, and, and dialogue and characterization from Transformers and the humans will be not as prominent. I mean, that's my hope. That's, that's really the, the one thing that I would be looking for in the next live action Transformers movie. And hopefully with a director who's not Michael Bay, who will, who will focus on the Transformers and not focus on the humans that that's my that's what I'm crossing my fingers for. So if they can satisfy that, I'll, I'll be happy. And then everything else I'll, I'll consider a bonus on top of that. So I guess we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, this, uh, movie news seems to be coming out weekly now. So, uh, I think the release of it, of the movie is about a year away. So, um, we've got about a year, but that's it for media news. All right. And let's move on to convention news. All right. Um, we have a couple things here. Uh, Renegade Studios, who um, are making the new uh, Transformers card game, had an announcement that they're going to be having a virtual event called Renegade Con. And this will have a lot of the Transformers content regarding their game. Uh, on Friday, July 16th, they have uh, at 4 p.m. Pacific a what's new and basically is just telling what's coming up what to expect um, on Saturday, June, July 17th. Um, they have 2 30 PM Pacific a role-playing game walkthrough that uh, talks about the system that powers the Transformers game, as well as their Power Rangers and GI Joe games. And then 6 30 PM Pacific, they have live live play with the Transformers game itself. Uh, so this might be interesting if you want to see how the game, uh, how the game actually looks and plays. And then at 8 PM Pacific, they have a game show and prizes. So this is a, a game show that will says it'll test your knowledge of power Rangers, GI Joe transformers and more. So uh, it looks like fun. Uh, you know, since we haven't really seen much from the game yet, it'll be good to actually kind of see it and play and um, check it out. So um, that will be July 16th. And most of the stuff is July 17th. And then uh, TF nation has made their first announcement for the big broadcast of 2021. Uh, they have announced that Neil Ross is going to be uh, joining them. And he was the voice of many characters 
including Bone Crusher, Hook, Crosshairs, Six Shot, Slag, Springer, and more. So uh, he was also on many other uh, shows, G.I. Joe, Voltron, and stuff. So uh, he he will be a great guest, and I imagine this is just the first of many. Uh, and the big broadcast will be August 13th and 14th. And if it's anything like last year, it'll be uh, probably on their Twitch channel. So uh, check that out. And that is it for convention news. Okay, and we will finish up the show with feedback. Okay, so we got a little bit of feedback on our YouTube channel from Comics Chill. And this is on Alt Mode episode 178. So this is uh, over 50 episodes ago? <laughs> over 60 episodes ago. So... Uh, Comics chill. Hope you're hope you're catching up. <laughs> but uh, his comment uh, is focused specifically on our Dreamwave coverage. So, uh, Comics chill writes, "Nice to see the Dreamwave books getting a nod. I know there is controversy around these books, but they're what made me a fan. I've made a few videos chronicling Dreamwave and their TF run on my channel. Love the show, guys. Definitely going to listen to the rest of these reviews. So yeah, back in Alt Mode 178, I think we reviewed." the Dreamwave G1 issue number one, and we did get through the whole first miniseries, so one through six, uh, and hope, Comics Chill, you enjoy those reviews. I mean, I, I think the controversy behind Dreamwave was how its business was run, so that you know, that's there's a lot of uh, <laughs> not good feelings towards Pat Lee, but I think particularly what people are upset about is that Dreamwave didn't get to continue their Transformers run because the business was run so badly. If Because there were a lot of good ideas, a lot of interesting, cool things that happened in, in the Dreamwave comics, a lot of things that were promised that were going to happen in the Dreamwave comics that never got to see fruition because Pat Lee destroyed the business. So, you know, there's I think there's a lot of fond, you know, love and remembrance for Dreamwave the the comics and the the company but not for pat lee so uh and i think that's totally deserved <laughs> but yeah so thanks comics chill for your feedback and hope you're continuing to listen and uh we also got a bit of feedback on our discord from our longtime listener and friend and no nature on dj ronin he has a correction for me so he says hey those are the best <laughs> Hey, Big C, I'm in with a correction. The To Be Continued in Back to the Future was first on the VHS release and not in the theatrical release after the writers got on board with Back to the Future 2 and 3. And he gave us a link to this debunking of uh, this particular uh, little bit of information. So fair enough. Thank you for the correction, DJ Ronan. This is similar to uh, the first Star Wars where the original theatrical run of Star Wars they didn't have episode four. It just was Star Wars with the opening crawl. There was no episode four, A New Hope, that was added later after they had, uh, you know, made sequels and, and did re-releases, theatrical re-releases. So Back to the Future, they did end on the cliffhanger, though. They did end, I mean, and I think the writers even talk about how they wouldn't have, they would have structured this cliffhanger differently if they were going to get more movies because they had Jennifer... Uh, Marty's girlfriend get in the DeLorean with him and Marty and that caused a lot of problems in the sequel so uh, they did have the cliffhanger in the movie yeah, that's why they just kind of left her yeah yeah that's why she was just he was she was she was just left in in 2015 uh, after they did all their yeah. adventures and, and then they brought you know, like, they they brought her back to 1985 they brought her back to the bad 1985 and then just left her there and said well if you fix everything in the past the good 1985 will reappear around her and she'll be fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, a lot of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff, but yeah, I mean, but DA Ronan, you are right that I, you know, I, of course I was nine years old when I saw this in the theater. So I don't remember uh, exactly the, you know, my, my memory of the, to be continued probably comes from the VHS release and, and you know, subsequent releases. Cause it's in every other release afterwards but it was not there in the original theatrical release so you get a gold star for correcting me good job dj ronan you also go on his list <laughs> <laughs> well he was already there <laughs> <laughs> other, other past uh, past uh, infractions 
That's why he never wins. <laughs> All right, uh, that will do it for this episode of Transmissions Alt Mode. As always, we end the show by giving a shout out to our masterpiece Donatrions, John 4 x Levengood, and Dinobot Maximize. Thank you guys for continuing to support the show at our highest level. We really appreciate it. And uh, also, if you want to help out the show, you can buy some merchandise from our T Public store. That's at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. Anything you buy from TeePublic using our link helps out the show, including all our transmissions-themed items, shirts, mugs, merchandise, masks. So, remember, transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. And Dr. Pants, thank you again for joining us. So tell everyone where they can find your awesome work online. Thank you for having me, and thank you for the compliment, Charles. Uh, You can find me and my friends doing the Nurse Stradamus thing, at NerdStradamus.com, or if you just want to go straight to the source of all our nerdy adventures, you can go to the Nerdstradamus channel on YouTube. That is our main outlet of uh, creative things that we do. And I mentioned this in the last, uh, in the main talk show, but I'll mention it here. We just hit a thousand subscribers, hit our milestone, and uh, we released a new music video celebrating that. So please go check it out. Uh, my co-host Lambo is big into music, and he crafted that song very quickly, and. You get to see me perform an awesome guitar solo. You want to see it. <laughs> just just look for Nurse Radamus. You'll find us somewhere. With an awesome tease like that, how, th- how can they not seek out Nurse Radamus? Exactly. Everyone loves guitars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. That'll do it for this episode of Transmissions Alt Mode. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. Later. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening and we'll see you again next week. 